What's up, your SEO masters? Let's talk about keyword research. This is gonna be a two-part series. This first one is gonna be more beginner-friendly. We're gonna talk about the basics. And the second one is gonna be focused on advanced tips and tricks. Let's get into it. By the way, this video is also applicable to a variety of different SEO tools. The important thing is understanding the basics. We're gonna continue using the same topic as previous videos, which is that keto topic. And for this video, we're gonna imagine that I wanna create a keto recipes blog. So I wanna find some low competition, but high volume keywords that I can start creating content for and start getting traffic for as soon as possible. I'm gonna walk you guys through how I do keyword research on a day to day. If we get into Ahrefs and we click on the Keywords Explorer, the first thing we wanna do is think as broad as possible. So we need to think that when we do keyword research, we're gonna start with a very general term and keep honing down on more specific keywords that fit the filters and all the different conditions we're gonna to add to our keyword research. So if I wanna make a blog about keto recipes, I'm gonna add that specific topic into Ahrefs. So keto recipes, I'm targeting the United States. If you're targeting any other country, feel free to change that. And I'm gonna hit search. When we hit that search button, we're gonna be directed to the overview of that specific keyword. So we are looking at keto recipes. Now let's break down this overview. The first thing we see and probably the thing that grabs our attention the most is this specific number, right? So we're getting 58 for keyword difficulty. It's telling us it is hard to rank for this specific keyword. And it's giving us an estimate that you'll need around 118 websites to rank in the top 10 for this keyword. Don't get scared. We're gonna cover all of this in just a second. Let's continue looking at what's going on for this specific keyword. Now we have this volume metric of around 200,000 searches, right? And we also get the trend of the last seven years. So starting around 2015, we can see how that volume has grown and how it's shrunk over time. If we highlight over this area, we get the distribution of clicks. So how many are going to organic, how many are going to paid, how many are going to both paid and organic, and how many searches are resulting in no clicks. We get the cost per click. And then we also have this interesting metric. How is it that the volume is 197,000, but the actual clicks are higher than that. So that's because of this specific term right here, the clicks per search. What that's telling us is that on average for every search for this specific keyword, there is gonna be more than one click. That can be for a variety of reasons. Maybe people are comparing results. Maybe people aren't happy with the results. Could be a lot of different things, but this helps us understand if we see that difference in volume and actual clicks for that specific keyword. Now we see the traffic potential. So this is talking about what's the potential traffic that the number one result is is gonna get for this specific keyword. So we see that huge difference. Obviously it's important to realize that that volume isn't completely representative of the full traffic we're gonna get. There's that layered breakdown of where the traffic goes for each specific keyword. But still, 60K in traffic potential, that's phenomenal. And then over here, we get the global volume. So around 302 global volume, and most of this is coming from the US, so 65%. Then we have a breakdown of all the different countries. If we keep scrolling down, we're gonna hit the keyword ideas section. So this is where we get all these different separations of different types of keywords that we can look into. The main one that we're gonna focus on is terms match. What that's telling us is we're gonna find keywords with the exact matching terms that we've added. The terms that we've added is keto recipes. So this is gonna give us a huge amount, almost 22,000 keywords with those specific terms. It can be in different orders, but those terms are always gonna be there. That's usually where we're gonna find the best and the most relevant ideas. Next, we're gonna have questions, which is a great thing to add to that blog post or to the content that we're gonna to produce to add a bit of relevance. And then we have also rank for and also talk about. So also talk about, as we can see, not a lot of results and not a lot of keywords here. So as we see here, these are keywords that other top ranking pages for the keyword that I've just put in, keto recipes, keywords that they also talk about. So ice cream, air fryer, these aren't gonna be super relevant. What we do wanna take a look at is also rank four. So it's telling us of the people that are ranking for the keyword that I've just put in, keto recipes, what other keywords are they possibly ranking for? So this is definitely gonna be interesting. There's also a good amount of keywords here, but oftentimes they will overlap. If we keep scrolling down, we're gonna take a look at the position histories. This is pretty crazy to see the fluctuation of the competitors, who's on top for how long. And this is very interesting to see how that shifts over time. And then if we keep scrolling down, we're gonna get the complete SERP, the complete results for this specific keyword. We can show more and it'll go all the way down 
to the 100th result. We're gonna cover all of this later. Let's focus on the main idea of the video, which is actual keyword research. So as I was saying before, we're gonna get most of the keyword ideas down here for terms match. And oftentimes those will be the most relevant ones. So let's just start there. So I can access this page through here and also up here for matching terms. I'm just gonna hit this link and it's gonna take us to this semi intimidating, very, very long list of keywords with a bunch of different data. So the two main things that I look at when I'm taking a look at this specific page is the keyword difficulty and the volume. The keyword difficulty, again, is something that we talked about. It's how hard is it to rank for that specific keyword. This specific metric is created by Ahrefs. There's a lot of different SEO tools that have their own metrics that give their own estimates to how hard it is to rank for a specific keyword, but it all revolves around the same idea. How strong are the links for that specific keyword. If we continue on to volume, we know what that is. Global volume, we talked about it before. Traffic potential, we talked about it before. Cost per click, clicks per search, as we mentioned before. And then we have this idea of parent topic. So this is actually a great touch by Ahrefs. And this helps us know where the keyword that we're specifically looking at, where does that fall under? Which umbrella term does that fall under? So if we continue on, when we put our mouse over this, we see SERP features. So these are all the different things that come up in the results for that specific keyword. Again, we have fluctuation of the results for that specific keyword. And then we have the complete SERP overview. So a small tip for me is that it's a lot easier just to click this drop down button instead of going into each specific keyword and opening up a separate SERP overview, right? So we don't need to do that. If we wanna take a look at the competitors and who's ranking, we can just hit this drop down. But anyway, let's say I wanna find low competition keywords for this specific topic. So keto recipes. The main thing that I would focus on is reducing this keyword difficulty number, this score. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add 10 as the max keyword difficulty, and this is gonna change the results dramatically. So if I get rid of that one sec, I just wanna show you guys, we had basically 22 2,000 keywords, and once I've added that filter, we've dropped down to 620 keywords, total volume 45,000. So a lot of these keywords are gonna be easier to rank, the competition isn't as strong, and we're gonna have a better chance of ranking and of getting some traffic at the start. Another thing that I wanna do is I wanna clean up some of that long tail. So there's gonna be a huge amount of keywords that are connected to this keyword that have 10 searches a month, 20 searches a month, 30 searches a month, and right now I wanna target at least 100 searches a month, you can go after those smaller keywords, that's 100% fine. But for this example, I wanna clean up some of these keywords to have a much more refined list of keywords. So now we're left with 112 keywords and these look a lot more relevant than previous results. So we do wanna take a look at the keyword difficulty and the volume. Again, some of that volume might be a little lower just because we are picking keywords that are a lot easier, but now we get a bunch of different ideas. So now that we've refined this list of keywords, we still need to do a very important thing which is we want to check those competitors. Let's say I really like this keyword, keto tofu recipes. It has a decent volume if I'm starting out and the keyword difficulty doesn't seem like it's too high. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the SERP. I'm gonna see who's ranking and why. So there's three main things that we're looking for when we're looking at that SERP. Number one, we wanna take a look at the type of content. So is it a blog post? Is it a product page? Is it a landing page for a SaaS? We wanna see exactly the type and the format of that content. And the best way to do that is to open up the top 10, top 15, top 20, if you'd like to see exactly what's going on. The second thing we wanna do once we open up that SERP is look at the quality and the angle of the content. So we wanna see exactly the type of content that they've written. Is it actually good? Can we improve it? Can we give it a different twist? What angle are they taking? An easy way to differentiate ourselves from our competitors is if everybody's writing about one thing in one specific way, so they're all talking about crispy baked tofu, then maybe we can talk about a different type of tofu. We can add a different twist on that specific content. And the final and probably the most important part of looking at our competitors is doing some deep competitor analysis. This is gonna be a more advanced topic that I'm gonna talk about in part two. I'm also gonna talk about advanced tips and tricks for keyword research. If you're interested in that, I'm gonna be posting the video right here. And otherwise, check out this video to get way more featured snippets this year. See you guys in the next one.